Joe. So obviously a little bit different dynamic in the coaching staff with Coach Bellows going to USF. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, I was really, really happy for, for AG when he got that opportunity. Um, I know he's been wanting to be a head coach and he got a great opportunity. So it was all, all good on our side. Like when someone gets a chance to you know, live out a dream, it's a great thing to see and be able to do it. Joe, what's the dynamic like with him not there it's been great. You know, this staff's been together for a long time. A lot of us were at UCF together as well. Um, a lot of us were at Missouri together as well. So we've been we've been together a long time, and I think because of that, we've had a great um, move over to this new situation where we're not fully staffed right now, but everybody just kind of taking different roles that they haven't had to do, and and just making sure it's as fluid as possible. Yeah. Clemson's defense, what, what you would see is that they're an attacking style defense. They like to pressure, they like to get up in your face and, and try to change the looks on the quarterbacks and, and the, the wideouts and O-line. And, and what you see is a defense that's clearly well coached and uh, they scheme well, they game plan well, and they play really hard. So they present a really unique challenge. What's Joe done to maybe impress you as he, He's been extremely intentional in his preparation. Um, it hasn't been too big for him. He hasn't changed who he is, but in the same breath, he understands his new role of having to lead this team. And uh, he's done a really good job of not having the moment be too big for him, but he's completely dialed into to what we're seeing and what we're expecting and how we're going to attack it. And, and uh, I'm actually excited to watch him go take the field on, on Friday night. Joe, are you calling plays? Is it Coach Hypo, or how is that going to work? Um, it's always going to be communal up there. You know, I'm his eyes up top. He's down on the field. And, and you know, as a whole staff, we'll get to the right calls together. Uh, obviously, you know, Clemson's got so much talent in their front. What, what stands out about all of them, even with a couple of guys out? Uh, yeah. No, they've – you've seen them just, a, just attack other offenses. That's what, that's one of the things that I actually respect about about what they do is they don't sit back and let the offense dictate what they want to do. They come after them and they try to, they try to force the offense's hand to, to play how they want them to play. So it's actually been, been a unique challenge with all the different stuff they're going to show you on tape. And, like I said, I'm excited to go see what it looks like on Friday night. What about the opportunities at wide receiver with no high and no Tillman and those guys mm -hmm. trying to earn some reps to in your trusted games? Yeah, absolutely. No, Ramel's played a bunch of ball for us this year. We have absolute trust in him. Um, and you know Squirrel, he's, he's a dynamic. He's, you know, he's lightning in a jar right there. So that guy can go the distance at any time. So once again, like we have uh, a unique responsibility as coaches to put a lot of guys that haven't played as much ball in good positions to go be successful, and I, I think we'll do that. What about Nimrod's development? What has he shown you? Chaz is explosive. He's he's explosive. He's long. He tracks the ball really well. Um, really excited about his future here. He's, he's a guy that has a chance to be a big-time player here for us. Navy's, Navy's a great guy. The whole room loves him. Um, he's a really hard worker. He's really meticulous in how he goes about his game planning and his week. And he's just the ultimate team guy. Like, he loves that university. It means something to him. It matters to him. And he's really the ultimate. Whatever needs to be done from him, he does. He's there early. He's there late. And he's in there preparing just like he's the starting quarterback. So he's been a great addition to the room. What about Taven since he's gotten back? I know he was picked up for a while. Uh, how has he come back from that injury? He looks like his old self again. So it's, it's been good watching him out there running around, throwing the ball again. So um, with it being like the collarbone like it was, like it's just it's just he was out for a little bit, and now there's not really been a setback on his way way back to it. He looks good. He looks good out there on the field. Now that you have Nico signed, yes, sir. tell us about what you guys <laughs> are getting in him as quarterback. He, uh, he's, he's obviously um, – you know, uh, a really, really high-end talent, but he's also a great kid. Like, he's been running scout stuff, and all our scout coaches are talking about what a great guy he is and, and how he doesn't feel like he's too big to do that type of stuff. So, really talented young man that, that's a really, really good young man, too, for lack of a better word. It's, it's been a great addition here. With all the hype and discussion about him coming in, I mean, he was pretty well-known before he ever got here. Yeah. Have you had some of those conversations about – you know, obviously extra pressure or whatever else, the outside stuff as well? Um, a little bit, but nothing really. Just like I'm saying, the way he's wired and the way right. he was raised, he doesn't come in thinking he's bigger or better than anybody or doesn't have to do anything. Like, he's been doing all the freshman lifts. He's been doing the scout work, and, and he just is happy to be out there and happy to start learning the offense and, 
get his chance to go compete. Didn't you see that camaraderie, brotherhood between Milton and him? And yeah, it's, Joe to help him? it's been great watching Joe try to like help him get get started and get him, get him to all the right spots and help with his eyes and all that type of stuff. So he, Joe's been awesome. What stands out about Clemson maybe on the back end? Everyone talks about the front seven, but yep. what, what do they try to do to get defensive on the back end? Yeah, the back end, people don't talk about them as much just because of how talented the front end is there, but they got a really good group of DBs back there. And, and just like that matches their front, they're extremely aggressive. So when you're letting the ball go, they're going to be trying to drive on it and make plays on the football. That's that's the type of, of player they have, and that's the way they're coached to be extremely attacking in their style. As you can see it on the tape. Obviously, you know, everyone wonders about you know the the motivation of guys. How into it are they? What do you see from your guys and being around them so much and how prepared and, and how much they want this game? Yeah, I think if you watch our guys in, in practice, like it's been a really high energy, good intensity practice. And um, I think a lot of that is like from what you asked earlier. We have some guys that are trying to show that, you know, they should be the guy moving forward here. So I think you've got a bunch of guys that are ready to go perform on, you know, on a big stage at a high level and, and make a statement in their minds. So um, the, not having Coach Golish there, are there like little responsibilities kind of split up and For sure. taking up a slack? Yeah, and, and you know, we lost a lot of support staff as well that went out, out there with him and got their first coaching opportunities and we're really happy for those guys too. But as far as like, you know, stuff they didn't even think about, like who's printing the scripts, <laughs> like all that type of stuff. So um, it's just everyone kind of grabbing on and, and doing what they can to, to help. And it's, like I said, it's been a really fluid transition. So as far as filling that position and your potential candidacy for it, that's after the ball game you guys are talking Yeah, we're going to go try to win a ball game on Friday night. And everyone's pitching in to get that one done and then we'll figure it out in the back end. What, uh, what about all the team stuff you guys have done? I guess you had the beach outing yesterday. What have you, the yacht, what have you guys, what have you enjoyed about this? So I wasn't at the beach outing or the yacht, so that was for the guys, but I uh, got to go to Joe Stone Crab last night, which was awesome. It was my first time getting to go there, so that was a big time meal. It was a really cool environment. I enjoyed that one a lot. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, sir. I guess I'm way back here. <laughs> How are you? Yeah. Um, no, I'll be up top with uh, Coach Hype will be down low, and it's it's always been extremely communal anyway. And, you know, obviously one guy's going to end up making the call, and Coach Hype's the head coach, so it's, it's always going to go through him. But um, as far as being the eyes up top and helping him get where he needs to go and, and um, him judging the, the feel and the, the play down low, I think it'll be a really nice transition for us, too. How have you seen Miller come along with these mentioned practices yeah, he's had a really good, um, really good December as far as you know, going from uh, no, late November with Bandy and then into this one where he's really gotten to take hold of it and make it his own. He's he's dialed in. He's he's ready to go play, and he understands that this is a big game. And uh, but he's not put all the extra pressure on himself to where he's tightening up. He just seems loose. He seems like himself, and he's ready to go to go play well. How was his bond with Ben Buffer kind of helped him embrace the starting quarterback? Yeah. It was a unique bond when Hendon was the starter, you know, that that one, that Joe stayed, and then two, that they be, they became such good friends and roommates, actually. So I'll tell you a story. When I get here, we had a, a walk through the first night in the hotel, and when I got to the lobby, Joe was sitting there, and Hendon had the call sheet in his hand, and Hendon was going through the, the plays, and Joe was making the calls, and Hendon was like, where are your eyes going here? And like, So Hendon still coming back from his rehab, working through the call sheet with Joe as before a Monday night walkthrough. So like that's the type of guys you got there. It's it's pretty special to see. And I didn't even know they were doing it. I just happened to walk up on it. Has been involved with practices here as well? Is he or is he still no, he's here. And it's here. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, the main thing he's doing right now is obviously rehabbing. You know, that's that's the biggest thing for him. But he's been great to have around the guys. And I think it's just um, a good presence to have around with the type of guy that he is because. He could have just said, like, I'm done with it, but he's still here, and he's like, he's wanting to make sure that we perform well as a team, which is, like I said, unique, but he's a unique young man. Uh, how has your role kind of changed now in college? Now, obviously, uh, you said that the process is streamlined with the coaches, yep. but how, how, how much have you taken on? How much work have you taken on? Yeah, I've had to, to take on quite a bit more with the uh, the actual preparation of like the call sheet and everything that he would do with Coach Heupel, and now I've taken into that role to make sure like everybody's on the same page and we're we're rolling and we have everything ordered correctly. So basically, just being what he was for Coach, filling into that role.
Yeah, he's told the stories before. Yeah. Uh, what has he told you about it? And, like, how do you feel like that? Is that like a building? Because obviously he's fast. Yeah, no, he's Joe's freaky athletic. I, have you ever seen a 250 pound man do a backflip? Like, it, it's pretty insane to watch. Um, but no, that's he always tells Joe likes to joke about that from where um, growing up doing that. He always said he got too big too quick though, so he had to stop. 